In this video, we'll look at how limits can fail to exist. Let me start by reminding you of this intuitive definition of the limit of a function and tell you that every mathematical definition that you see, you can ask the question, what does it take for the components and conditions in the definition to not be valid anymore? Under what circumstances do those conditions not hold or the components break down, causing that object not to exist? So in this concrete example of the limit of a function, we may ask the question, is there always a limit? So feel free to pause the video and think about it. Is it guaranteed that for every function f and every point a on the number line, the limit as x approaches a of f of x will be there, will exist? Okay, I hope you paused the video, thought about it, and realized that the answer is no. Sometimes the limit does not exist. This begs the question, how can this happen? How can a limit fail to exist? There are several ways for the limit to not exist. Um, for example, the one-sided limits as x approaches a could not be the same. What do I mean by one-sided limit? I mean this left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. This is the two cases. So when x approaches a from the left, f of x may tend to a certain uh, value, but this not, does not necessarily have to be the same value f of x tends to when x approaches a from the right. Okay, so if the one-sided limits do not match, the limit does not exist. Here is an example. The graph of the sine or signum function is what you see here. It outputs the sine of x. So for negative x, it outputs negative 1. For positive x, it outputs positive 1. For 0, it outputs 0. And you can see that as x approaches 0 from the left, the, we get the left-hand limit be negative 1, whereas x approaching 0 from the right, you get the right hand limit be positive one. So we see that the one sided limits do not match. There is this sudden discrete jump in the graph of the function at zero, x equals zero. Hence the limit as x approaches zero does not exist. Next, it's possible that the function is unbounded uh, at x equals a. So here is the, an example. The graph of one over x squared is what you see here, and um, which is not defined at x equals zero, but as x approaches zero, the values 1 over x squared get greater and greater. So you can see how the graph explodes around x equals 0. So there is not one value l to which the uh, values of the function would get arbitrarily close to l of the y-axis. They exceed any number that you would fix. Hence, the limit does not exist as x approaches 0. Next, the function could behave in a very peculiar way that I'm calling wild oscillations. Let me show you by an example what I mean. Here you can see the graph of the sine of 1 over x. This is the trigonometric function sine applied to 1 over x. It is again not defined at x equals 0, but as x approaches 0, you see the oscillations of the sine function get more and more frequent. They are squished in uh, towards the y-axis and you see them getting denser as x approaches 0 and other, rather than it approaching a value um, arbitrarily close, what you see is every value, every y value between negative 1 and 1 is being visited by the graph of the function infinitely often and it never gets arbitrarily close to any number, hence the limit does not exist. Okay, I hope these examples where the limit fails to exist were uh, clear enough and now it's time for some questions. Let's look at this table of values to estimate, if possible, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So, pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have selected the option that says that the limit does not seem to exist. And indeed, if you look at the table of values, you see the left-hand limit uh, it seems to be negative 1, whereas the right-hand limit seems to be positive 2. The one-sided limits do not match, hence the limit does not seem to exist. Next, we have a, a, the graph of a function f, and you are, your task is to select the values for a such that the limit as x approaches a does not exist. Pause the video and select your options now. Okay, I hope you paused the video and selected for a negative 2, 0, and 4. These are the points along the x-axis where the limit does not exist. So at negative 2, the left-hand limit does exist, but the right-hand limit does not. The function widely oscillates around that point. At x equals 0, we see uh, uh, not matching one-sided limits. The left-hand limit is positive 1, the right-hand limit is negative 1. Whereas uh, for the last one, 
uh, x equals 4, we see that the function is unbounded around that point, hence the limit does not exist. Okay, what is the one-sided limit uh, as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x if f is defined in this piecewise way? Let's pause the video and uh, input your answer in the box. Hope you pause it and have inputted the number 2 for the limit. So this is the right-handed limit that we are interested in. So x should be greater than 1 and approach 1 from the right. This is the second line where that happens. So you look at the square root of x plus 3 and think about what happens when x approaches 1. You get the square root of 1 plus 3, the square root of 4, but we are taking positive square roots, so that's why we get square root of 4 equals 2. Next, what value of b ensures that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x exists if f is defined in this piecewise way? So pause the video and select your answer or input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted the value 3 for b. You get that by ensuring that the one-sided limits match at x equals negative 2. The right-hand limit is easy to compute. You just plug in x equals negative 2 into this expression and you get negative 2 plus 1 squared. That's negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So the left-hand limit of x of this function must be plus 1. So x plus b as x approaches negative 2 must be equal to 1. x approaching negative 2 leaves us with negative 2 plus b. That needs to be equal to uh, plus 1. That can only happen when b is equal to 3. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.